and now... Today's close-up, a look at Dallas' blossoming punk rock scene, the music and the people, and their pessimistic view of life. Stay with us. Sometime. And punk, principally when it comes to dress or music. The two aren't necessarily one and the same, but they are definitely related. New Wave is more chic, sophisticated, and acceptable. At its root, though, is punk. Hardcore, raw, and distasteful to some. Both when it comes to dress and music. Punk also is a loose term for the latest youth movement in this country. In tonight's close-up, Kay Vinson takes a look at a segment of Dallas punk scene. So who is this guy anyway? Just another Dallas crazy, you're probably thinking. Well, yes and no. I've been unemployed quite a bit, but, you know, now I'm making it, I'm, I'm making food, I'm cooking, I love it. I'm happy, I, you know, I can cook and I can play rock and roll or I can play rock and roll or I can cook. Back in the old days, when this guy was 17, he was what you might call a hippie, long hair, the whole bit. Ten years later, he's cut off all the hair and taken to wearing what he describes as government-issue eyeglasses. He explains he is not going for the Buddy Holly look. His name is Bobby Sox, born and raised in Oak Cliff, though, as one Robert Calverly. On this particular night, Bobby's band, Stick Men with Ray Guns, is playing for a private party at Dallas's Hot Club. The party is to celebrate the release of an album by some of the city's punk rock groups. They play a kind of music that is largely ignored by Dallas radio stations. Music described as invigorating, raw, frenetic, angry, evil, blasphemous social commentary. I'm not too fond of organized religion, so I kind of kick God around a little bit. But it's not really against him, it's against all the jerks that are soaking people for their money and just not really giving them anything in return, you know. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like Jesus Christ died so that TV evangelists could drive big cars and live in big houses. You know, it's nowhere. The punk rock also has been described as sexist. They just gonna learn a little discipline. I'm telling you, this is how it is. Yeah, it's gonna behave for me. It's gonna behave, behave. say their music is not sexist or evil or blasphemous but that it is sarcasm in its purest most stinging form <laughs> ten years nancy williford is bobby's girlfriend of 10 years she was 27 when they met by day she works on highly classified government projects at e-systems in garland Yes, you heard that correctly. And now, <laughs> everyone knows. Bridget Hingle is 23 years old and works for a paint store. She and 20-year-old bass player Bob Beeman plan to get married this month. Both of them are angry at the world. I'm against all the commercial aspect of anything. I don't like the media in itself. It's totally arbitrary to begin with. It appeals to the lowest common denominator, which I really hate. Because I don't consider myself that at all. I feel that everyone, everything that is mass produced is boring. People look at punk rock as being something that's just kind of weird where everybody dresses kind of strange and, and plays this real annoying music and can't sing and can't play, but it's not that way. We really have something to say. If you can understand the words.
everybody's always been able to generally feel that they could live the rest of their lives mm. with some degree of certainty. I don't think he can now. Clark Blacker is 32, a typesetter. His wife is 28 and works at United Press International. The drummer Scott Elam is 29 and owns a drapery business in Arlington. Well, now that you've met Scott and Clark and Bob and Bridget and Bobby and Nancy, let us introduce you to Neil Caldwell. He's 31, a graduate of Green Hill, one of Dallas's more prestigious private schools. He plays in a Dallas punk rock group called NCM, short for non compos mentis, Latin for not of sound mind. He smiles when explaining that. Caldwell also owns a record store in Oak Lawn. He smiles again and calls himself a subversive capitalist. Not surprisingly, he's in the business of producing albums for local punk rock groups like this one by The Devices, a band whose members are students at Southern Methodist University. And yes, you heard that correctly. Well, we've been so busy introducing everyone that we haven't yet hit on what it is these folks are doing out there on the dance floor. If you don't already know, it's called slam dancing. Some describe it as a loose example of fun or simply the latest dance craze to come along. But most do agree it is a bit more dangerous than the twist or jerk ever were. Regardless, it symbolizes the latest movement of America's bitter and disillusioned youth, angry, frenetic youth who preach against commercialism and reverently embrace a burning pessimism. Their music, though, is catching on, which translates into big bucks down the line and lots of mass-produced punk rock music. Somewhat ironic for a movement that so abhors commercialism. Ouch. Kay Vinson, Channel 8 News. Jack Kerouac lives after all. On tomorrow's close-up... Right! Again! Me! Me! Would you call that equitable? 